Welcome, welcome everybody. Today on our online Positive Psychology Hour, a partnership with the Whole Being Institute and the Marlene Myers and JCC Manhattan, we're going to be talking about our one year milestone and what has changed in you. My name is Caroline Colas, and I'm the Senior Director of Health and Wellness at the Marlene Meyerson JCC Manhattan. In March 2020, when the reality of COVID-19 was just beginning to sink in, the JCC and the Whole Being Institute joined together in a groundbreaking effort to help us stay connected and to share skills for navigating life in a crisis. Little did we know then what it would, what it would mean and that in 52 weeks of free lunchtime positivity hours, Megan McDonough and Phoebe Atkinson of the Whole Being Institute and me, Caroline of the JCC, would introduce faculty and alumni from the Whole Being Institute who offered understanding, concrete help, and practical skills drawing from the field of applied positive psychology to help us get through this year. It is now one year later. What has this year meant to you and to your well being? How have you changed? I'm so glad you're joining us today, Megan, myself, and Phoebe, as we explore these questions and dive into the opportunities and the growth that these difficulties of this year have given us. You have been here with us on up days, on down days, on holidays, and on the who knows what day it is days. And today, we want to hear from you about your year and what it's meant to you. A little bit about who's on the call. Of course, we have Megan McDonough, who is the CEO of the Whole Being Institute, and Phoebe, who's been partnering with me to bring these Lunch and Learns and also workshops at the JCC in positive psychology for the past three years. And the, uh, Phoebe is also a, a psychotherapist and a coach in private practice, and she served on the faculty in the Certificate for Positive Psychology at the Whole Being Institute as well as a, a lead faculty in the positive psychology coaching program for WBI. Welcome to the call. Megan, I think you're gonna start us off, which I'm very excited about, and uh, we'll, get, we'll get going here. Great, thank you, Caroline. Hello, my fellow travelers, so good to be here with you today. Let's start as we always do. Hello, Elaine, I love your little hearts that you put there, mwah, to you too. Let's start with the centering like we always do. So I invite you, if you're comfortable to do so, to close your eyes. If not, make a soft gaze, um, whatever is most comfortable for you to actually sink into this moment. I invite you to take a nice deep breath in and a big exhale. Just reminding yourself as you exhale to release what you don't need in this moment. So you might have extra body tension that's not necessary. You might have extra mental tension about what came before this moment. Another deep breath in. Big exhale. I'm just going to invite you to pay attention to your body. I'm just going to bring out certain points of your body and just bring your attention there so we can make sure we're fully arrived in our physical container in this moment by being aware of both feet, both ankles, the left and the right shin, the left and the right knee the upper thigh, and you let those thigh muscles spread and relax and accept the support of the chair. Feel the weight of both legs. And simply notice the breath coming in and out of your torso. And as you bring your attention to the whole length of your spine, from the very tip of your tailbone right up through the crown of the head, finding some space between the shoulders and the ears as you drop the shoulders down. 
being aware of the sleeve of the left arm and then the sleeve of the right arm. Noticing the left shoulder, left upper arm, left elbow, left forearm and wrist and all of the fingers on the left hand. Aware of the right shoulder, right upper arm, elbow and forearm and wrist and the right hand. Noticing the weight of both arms as they hang off the torso. Being aware of the face, the neck. Breathing into your entire body, front and back, top and bottom, left and right, inside and outside. And as you luxuriate and sink into this moment, allow yourself to mental time travel and lightly touch with your mind's eye this last year, these last 12 months. And as you recall the last 12 months, just notice if any new relationships have been born. Maybe someone you spoke to in the small groups during these sessions. Maybe your neighbor across the way that you never actually took the time to notice before COVID. What new relationships arose out of the circumstances we find ourselves in. And holding that person in your mind's eye and just noticing what it was like to develop that new relationship. And diving deeper into this experience over the last 12 months, what capacities have grown in you? What new skills or new knowledge or new wisdom may have been built this year? It may be as simple as getting comfortable with wearing a mask, doing a Zoom call with your grandchildren or friends, or actually being a part of this community. And as your mental time travel to the future, imagining a time after you've been vaccinated and your family and the community has been vaccinated and it's safe Go back to gatherings. Notice what you're hopeful for. What are you hoping and wishing and dreaming about for the post-pandemic reality? And after we're done with this meditation, I'm going to give you about 60 seconds to journal some of the things that you notice came up, either about new relationships, new capacities, or your hope for the future. For now, take a deep breath in. Big exhale. And keeping that inward focus, so don't bother looking at the screen, just look down to your paper, grab a piece of pen, or grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and journal. What new capacity has grown in me? What new relationships have I fostered? What do I hope for the future? I'm going to give you about 60 seconds to do that.
And finishing up that sentence. We are going to circle back to this, these prompts a little bit later on. We've settled our body, we've put some reflections down, and now we want to embody and move a little bit. So I'm going to turn it over to Caroline to take us into the next step of our day today. All right. Fantastic. I just have to move my screen up so you can see me. And I thought it would be great to start with gratitude, right? And a little dance to gratitude. Sound good, everybody? You can move in your own way. You can sit in a chair. Um, and let me just share my screen and my sound. We've learned in this year that gratitude is one of the quickest ways to elevate mood. And uh, when we have our mood is elevated, why then we have the energy to do what it one is and I give that we want to do. Oops, hang on. <laughs> Here we are. All right. Starting with your hands, everybody. Just wiggle a little bit. Now squeeze. Oh, and release. Yeah. Two more. Little chop. Well gotta give thanks once again bringing in the word for the world of men say this goes out to the children no matter what the day now claw hands sometimes it's been we fun. are here we are the bind and the time has come for us all to shine so can you give me I a little claw hand one mind and good give thanks for now web spaces there's an opening let the sunlight fill your eyes let your voices harmonize when you look at a child's eyes, you can see everything Sometimes that's got in the sky. So relax, as it all rearranges, we are all going through the same changes. I like to Good. sing a song with you, so give and thanks one time, what you gonna do? Give, give thanks, people of the world, waking up I give. Palm direction, give thanks, this is how I fill my cup, I give thanks. Give thanks. I'm giving thanks for this life that I'm living and what I'm seeing. Freeing up my mind for what I truly believe in. Giving thanks for the children and the light that they spark in my heart. Inspire the way that I walk and I talk. I'd rather teach them what they could be than what they are not. Faith in they channel in third eye spots. Celestial vision and the voice they got and the love that we all will never be stopped. Giving thanks for the tools and the jewels that we bless with. Use them in the time when life gets hectic. And the light, yeah, that's the nexus. The place where people come and get connected. Earth, wind, Nurturing. water, fire, ancient Desire. ancestors, wisdom takes us Power higher. Thing. Build the foundation for seven generations to come. And edge, take we your are one. And go the People of the world, waking up, I Good. give thanks. Now can you use your whole body? This is how I fill my cup, I give thanks. Give thanks. Whoa, 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 whoa. I Beautiful. give thanks. Yeah. The opportunity to feel our strength, feel our power. So what you gonna do? From everything to bravery. Take a moment just to dance your strength. Even thanks for what have you I'm used? Every day, in every way that the journey's unfolding. I hear what you say. Be here today. No need to be holding on. Nice. Let go and just That's carry it. on. And though our you struggles did it. try to hold us down, have faith and turn it around. We believe we can achieve. New you coming Good. through. Busting out of your seat, y'all. Let's go back. You're you going to the and elevation. You're one new result, so you take new action. New action, new creation. Bring it back to a higher vibration. Love the other non living Joy things. And rejoice in the voice through the song we sing. Give thanks. Right. 
open. This is how I fill my cup. I give thanks. You can. You did your magic. And you're in the play. Good. Sometimes you have to fight. Some great and And sometimes you have to let go. Web space. Open. Sometimes you have to touch. Sometimes you had to claw your way through. Took some grit, determination. Sometimes you had to squeeze it out, squeeze it out. Good. And there were other times you had to just make room. Little elbows tight, make room. So I thought we would do that. Just hold it all in there for a moment and just savor it. So the Nia hand movements, right? Sometimes we had to open. Sometimes we had to squeeze and hold on. Sometimes we had to claw our way through. And sometimes we had to touch and comfort. But we arrived and we landed here in deep gratitude. Thank you, Caroline. Ah, oh, thank you, Megan, for welcoming everyone. And I just want to take the opportunity to look at all of the pages of your faces. And I invite you to do the same as you scroll through and just savor this moment, this day is all about savoring our collective grit and resilience and accomplishments, our creativity, our contribution, our persistence. And so just savoring all of these faces. And Megan, I'll ask you if you will to place the slides up. Thank you, Caroline. As Caroline mentioned, she and I have been teaching positive psychology and Nia over the years at the JCC. It really grew out of my love of dancing Nia in Caroline's class with many of you that I see here today. And this is why I love working with Caroline. She will just take uh, what we're experiencing and bringing it into the body so we can have a whole other uh, dimension of really integrating all of this learning. My heart is so full right now in this moment to see everybody and I'm so glad you're here. When we look to celebrate this year, this collaboration between the Whole Being Institute and the JCC Manhattan, at the time we were thinking about it, a brilliant article was offered. It's open access and we'll send you the link in a little bit. It was in the Journal of Positive Psychology and it was called Positive Psychology in a Pandemic. And it started with this quote. It said, faced with uncertainty, it is common for people to seek positive solutions. A lot is being talked about right now in terms of mental health and a lot of increase in significant issues because of all the stressors. And this article really came just in time. It validated everything that Caroline, Megan, and all of our contributors have been uh, giving. And also I think all of you have been experiencing and we're gonna review some of their findings today and also have you continue to integrate some of the uh, things you've been exposed to and perhaps practicing. In this year anniversary, uh, this article that was released, it's 20 pages and it's the leading scholars. There are 12 scholars that contribute. And they talk about how 
positive psychology usually studies what's right with people, what is best and most good about people. Then when this happened, they said, you know what, we also study what happens when things go very wrong and what role can positive psychology play in terms of helping people both cope and grow in a crisis. So in the article, which I will cover just a little bit, the researchers gather the different practices and they look at how can these different positive practices help people to grow, the general population. And it really connected to our mission and our programming and hopefully the experience of many our, of our participants that throughout this year, this has been about helping you support yourselves and other people through the pandemic to strengthen your mental health. And so our mission is validated through the research and most importantly also that people have been showing up and communicating to us how meaningful this has been, both the presenters as well as the participants in, in our learning community here. It's very much a co-creation. So Megan, if you'll uh, turn the slides over. This is fun. I'm usually the one that's running the slides, so this is great for me. What the researchers have found that there are three ways that these positive practices and mindsets and, and skills help us. They call them buffering, bolstering, and building. And here's a very high level. The buffering effect is actually, it helps us to buffer against distress. It, this is all really looking at the mental health and how distress and stressors can co-occur with mental health. So the buffering effect occurs when positive processes moderate or diminish the ill health during the crisis, that it actually can reduce our mental distress when we activate some of these processes. There's a bolstering effect that actually boosts our mental health and it helps us to activate positive emotions and create conditions and relationships that help us to maintain our mental health, even in despite of the crisis. And in our uh, reflection, Megan asked you to think about what new relationships have already occurred for you. So the bolstering effect of positive emotions and relationships, they help us maintain our mental health. And then the build effect is seen when an individual is able to use the crisis in a transformative way. They can lead to increased mental health in the future. This is about growing through adversity and building, using the process of going and growing through a crisis to actually transform. So for instance, you might find that you have greater self-compassion as a result of some of these uh, webinars that we've offered, greater sense of your strengths and using them, and perhaps having even more of an enhanced meaning. We know that we can bring these processes into the future because we have built them. And that's also what's known as post-traumatic growth and really strengthening your mental health through these practices. So you can turn the slides and here are some of the practices that they found. And what we also found was that, oh, Megan, we can, oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, what we found in uh, looking at these practices that this really correlates to so many of the webinars that we've offered. And I'd like to name a few of the webinars and you can take a walk down memory, memory lane with us. We've had over a hundred webinars. We're not gonna be able to name everyone. I see a lot of you actually are on our call today. So the presenters, we thank you for your generosity, your scholarship, your application, your creativity, your willingness to show up when Caroline or I or Megan sent you an email and said, can you come speak for us? Uh, it really has been a win-win for all of us. So if you remember the, uh, the meaning uh, webinars that we had, uh, that they are all kind of intersecting, but we had Dr. Michael Steger, who's a leading researcher out in Colorado, and he spoke about the elements of meaning and how we don't find meaning, we actually create meaning, and that we can think of all of these practices in terms of micro practices, these skills, mindsets, practices that help us cope and grow. So meaning is about story. It's about the sense that we make of our experience. And there's nothing like a pandemic or a crisis, if you will, to help us really cull and sort through and prioritize what's most important. So here's one of the 
uh, things that they found. In the article, what they do is they define the actual focus, the positive psychology topic. They give a little bit of the background in the research and then they offer some application. Positive psychology builds on what's strong and what is right, as I said, and it is also known for having been kind of birthed through some of the research in crisis. Dr. Barbara Fredrickson, who will be speaking with us on April 6, actually did a lot of her research on resilience during 9-11. So a lot of what the researcher are illustrating in this article our prior research studies about how did people cope in adversity such as 9-11 and all, all kinds of other crises, and then how can the recent research in this past year inform us. So then we moved into uh, resilient coping. We had Dr. Maria Sirwa, who's a faculty at The Whole Being. We had recently Clara, one of our graduates, who spoke about resilience through the lens of her story about Mount Fuji and her, uh, her quest there. Uh, we've also had uh, many other people talk about the stories of meaning and the resilient coping and the strategies that they shared. We also had a lot of talks by Dr. Sherry Kelly, who shared a lot of the resilient work uh, as it relates to teenagers. And this is a population right now that is really suffering. So there's a lot of uh, effort right now in helping the mental health with teens. Then we had uh, also uh, people like Deb Levin, who I see is on the call today. One of her coping strategies is to go to the museums in New York. And so we had her take us through her favorite art um, masters and through the lens of positive psychology and she activated her strength of beauty and excellence. So we had all kinds of people sharing. And then we moved into self-compassion and this wasn't just one webinar, this was many. This is about taking the strength of kindness and applying it to yourself. And this was Dr. Uh, Diane, I think it was Diane Collier who talked about self-compassion and how she relates that with her parenting groups. Uh, we also had Mega, who created this beautiful grace garden, and she was joined recently by another student of ours, Nick, and he actually had all of you, he facilitated the grace garden, so you could have your own self-compassion. We also had Boriana, who taught us loving kindness meditation, and brought that research in love and kindness, and how do we activate that for ourselves right now as a very important intervention. We had a lot of people talk about courage and recently we had the JCC Whitney Chapman uh, highlight the different types of courage and how we can activate those through our uh, activation and our behaviors and our choices. We had many people talk about gratitude. We had Dr. Nancy Kirsner, we had Yarrow. Uh, we had so many people bring the research and the application of the importance of saying thanks, giving thanks, appreciating the good. Then we had Ryan Nemec, who is the head of the VIA Institute. He also has a new study about character strengths. These practices that people have been using really help people to be at their best during a pandemic. We also had Jane Anderson, who recently uh, came and talked about Groundhog Day and how we can strength spot and uh, be very specific in how we bring our best forward. Uh, we also had uh, Sarah Tinsley, Sonia Tinsley, who I see is on the call today. She has a group called uh, the Strengths Keepers and how she can help us be a strength keeper in our communities. And we had so many other people, uh, again, I can't name them all, but these hopefully will sound familiar to you. All of these topics that people uh, reported and uh, had you interact with. Then we had, of course, many, many people talk about the, uh, the generative nature of positive emotions. Dr. Barbara Fredrickson, who will be with us, created the broaden and build theory. We had recently the Dr. Kildow, Lorraine Kildow, Moms, Pops, and Pips, her model about micro practices, how we can activate those uh, through the different uh, interventions, knowing what those positive emotions are and how to really uh, cultivate these in our day-to-day -day choices and the behaviors that we schedule in and engage in. And then uh, Dr. Fredrickson also has a section in the paper about positive interpersonal processes. And those are basically how do we help cultivate the best in our relationships? She's going to be featured on the 6th and Megan is going to be interviewing her.
And then lastly, high quality connections. These are micro moments of positive interactions that we can have no longer at the water cooler, but even here, if you think about all the little micro connections you've made or throughout the day, how they can activate the positive emotion of love and positivity. And all of these both buffer, bolster and build our mental health. In the research that has been shown, these types of interventions, when we do them on a regular basis, they help to build resource within us and also within our community that's known as an upward spiral. And so throughout the pandemic, these are the things they found that people use to cope. So just taking all of that in, remembering those 100 plus webinars that we've had, all of the different people that have come to share their application of, it's one thing to be in the laboratory and to do science. It's another thing to actually take these, find your own way through them and be uh, the researcher in your own laboratory where you can begin to feel what that broaden and build feels like within yourself. So then lastly, we have just one more uh, slide before we get into talking to you a little bit. They end the research study with this quote, and it says managing COVID-19 is more than hand-washing and social distancing. Instead, it is a story of hope and despair. And the research uh, study and all of these practitioners, it's about applied positive psychology. Their conclusion is take these studies, use them, take them forward. We offer this because we wanna help you uh, use this time, be constructive in how you're coping. We know from the broaden and build theory that through the 9-11 research and, and things in, in of that nature in the different difficulties that we go through, that there are psychological processes that we can turn to and they really help us navigate out of despair and activate hope. We know that hope is both uh, fearing the worst and yearning for the better, as uh, Dr. Dan Tomasulo has taught us, it also activates and mobilizes our action to take choices, make choices. And that's what Caroline, Megan, and I did. We mobilized our resources together in service of bringing some hope to our community to help us sustain ourselves and strengthen and grow in community. And now Megan is going to take us into some prompts to help us reflect on how have we grown? How have we strengthened? How have these webinars and uh, this positive psychology practice, how have these helped us to sustain ourselves? And also how can we take this forward as we move into re-entry, still navigating uncertainty? Thank you, dear Phoebe, my goodness. That was a happy trip down memory lane. I, just a nod to you before we move to the next thing about how brilliant that was, highlighting the entire span of 100 plus. Yes, Joanne, you're right. So many riches. Just going to um, look at the sprinkly. I'm sorry? Yeah. It sounded like someone was saying something. I also, I also wanted to say... Um, It may have started with Phoebe, Caroline, and I wanting to be of service as best we could. I'm deeply aware of the fact that, <laughs> I'm going to bring you behind the scenes. Our early conversations were like, what kind of topic should we have? Should we structure it around Spire? Should we do it around mind, body? Like, what, how should we organize it? And at the end of the day, what we ended up doing was just saying, what is it that people want to give and how do they want to serve? And through that came all of these riches. And at the end of this year, when we saw that report came out, Phoebe and I had to start laughing because you would think that we planned <laughs> this year around those nine topics because that's exactly what we have been doing. Yes, Phoebe's holding up the paper right now. Uh, that would have been a nice recipe to have at the very beginning of the year, but instead we just asked you, the people who are uh, learning and applying and studying these tools to speak to our community so that they can teach us all. And in doing so, we followed that recipe without even being aware of it at that time. So 
I just want to congratulate uh, the team in that by that I mean the extended team of people who are coming here and also for the people who are experiencing it. Uh, this is why it works. <laughs> um, so with that in mind, what I'd like to do is just pose a question to you that I sort of laid on at the very beginning of this time together. And that is, what new capacities have you built during this last 12 months? And we can expand that even broader by saying, what new relationships have helped you over the last 12 months? So whether it's re new relationships or new capacities, um, we're going to do a, a share in just a moment with small groups, but I want to set the stage. There is a tendency of the mind to say that, oh, that change wasn't very big, or that's not worthwhile, or I didn't learn anything new. We know from the negativity bias that there could be other things in there if you just dig a little deeper. Even wearing a mask, getting comfortable wearing a mask is a new capacity. Um, even being on this Zoom call is a new capacity. And since you're here, I assume that that's a capacity that has grown for you. Uh, meeting with the grandkids on Zoom. Um, so what I want to ask, uh, Caroline, I think you're ready to do the breakout groups, is I'm going to give us, let's see, um, six minutes if we have groups of two. Does that sound good, Caroline and Phoebe? Is that a good amount of time? I don't know if I would do groups of two because let's sometimes three. people don't join. Okay, let's do three. Oh, four, three or four. You you choose, but let's give okay. people, I'm going to give people a little bit longer than seven minutes in case there is bigger groups. Um, all right. Okay. So, and, uh, and what are we sharing, Caroline? You're sharing a new capacity that we've built over these last 12 months or a new relationship that has helped us um, build our own capacities to be with this so either capacity or a new relationship that has or, grown. or new or new talents and skills that's a new capacity so new talent new skills new capacity new uh new friends new relationships some basically what we're asking is what what has grown for you in these last 12 months yeah i'm ready if you want me to open the rooms good well, i'll give you seven minutes and off you go Now, let me just see. And Meg, do, Megan, do you want me to pause the recording? Sure. Okay. So we're just yes. waiting for people to come back into the groups. Yep. And uh, if you want to take me off of PIN, we can look at the whole, the whole group to sort of do a, sure. a debrief. I don't think you're on PIN. No. Oh, I am. I can do it myself, though. Remove PIN. Okay. Here we go. I think the pin is when you do it yourself and the spotlight is when you do oh, it for everyone. Oh, see, I learned something new. What capacity <laughs> have you learned today? The difference yes. between a pin and, and a spotlight. Oh, that's and were you going to add that? Were you going to add that? That's exactly what I was going to say. A new capacity, new tool. That's right. That's right. Every day in, every day. Tenacity. <laughs> yeah. Tenacity. Yeah. Oh. Wow, wow, wow. That was great. Oh, so I'm glad. Let's ha let's have a little sharing. I'd love to be able to just do a larger group debrief, uh, share a capacity or relationship or something over the last twelve. Uh, I was gonna say twelve years. Oh my goodness, no, twelve months that has grown for you. Feels like twelve years. <laughs> so in the chat, Megan. Um, I'd actually like to hear a voice first, and okay. then maybe we can all share in the in the chat. But if, if someone feels compelled to share, if you could just unmute and share, that would be great. Uh, yeah, I, I was telling my my buddy in the breakout room that I don't know. I had like a ten or fifteen year lapse in painting, and so now I'm taking two painting classes. I'm you know in a creative writing class. I run a creative writing class. I, I'm baking. I'm cooking. I'm you know, doing all these creative things that I, I never had time for before. Mm, Lois, that is so wonderful to hear. Raise your hand if you relate to Lois that you've sort of built a creative capacity that you didn't have the time for before. Thank you, Lois, for sharing. Anybody else? Yeah, Elaine. Um, 
Well, I have said it in the chat, but I wanted to just say it publicly that the three of you have been my lifesaver during this time. And I, I'm so grateful. And even though I've been through the SIP program, this has just been reminding me of all of the wonderful things that um, SIP offered and to apply it. And I just found new capacities of learning how to find other ways to exercise, you know, being uh, more um, outside more and just enjoying more quiet time. And uh, the other thing that I did was we realized that we couldn't go on vacation. So I turned my, my backyard into a vacation home, a vacation spot. So it's been enjoying that. So wow. I did again, just thank the three of you. It's been wonderful. Um, hoping it continues. Thank, Thank you. you, Elaine. You're so welcome. So getting outside, who's done more of that? Yeah, getting outside. Um, uh, building a little garden outside. That's fantastic. A little mini vacation. How many of you have changed places around your house or made little spots or cleaned up spaces in your house because you've spent more time there? Um, thank you, Elaine, for that. Sharon, you raise your hand. Off you go. Unmute yourself and let's hear what you have to say. Um, I think what I've learned, one of the things I've learned is to recognize and accept my needs and find healthy ways to meet them. That I don't have the structure that I used to have in my life uh, that met my social needs or my spiritual needs. And so I've had to recognize those needs and find other ways to meet them. Mm. Wow, that's great to see that you have that, that structure is needed. And even though an old structure goes away, yeah. creating a new one can still support and you. Megan, let's see a show of hands. Anyone else finding new ways to meet their needs, you know, just like during this time. Thank you, Sharon. And I just want to also acknowledge there was a couple of people who asked in the chat, how can we get uh, the recordings? If you go to wholebeinginstitute.com into the blog section, we have a whole category of in the blog section called webinars, and it's all the, the JCC positive psychology hours. Um, sometimes it's hard keeping up with all of the content we have there. So make sure you go down to the bottom and press older entries, and then it, it brings you to new pages where some of the, the stuff is stored. So. And I'll put that and in the I, chat, Megan, and we'll have it. I did. The, I put yeah. it in the chat. Okay, okay great. great. Thank and that you. will go out with the recordings also. Yeah, I put, that, I put it in the chat. Do we have one more thing that wants, I have a feeling that someone wants to see, yes, Deborah, you, I knew there was another thing that needed to be said. What, yeah, so, me, so one of the things I, I mentioned is uh, I ended up getting a Zoom account to accommodate one of my groups and that's enabled me to like do many Zoom meetings to reach out to people. And one really nice thing that happened is I started doing a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with an old friend from high school that I had sort of lost touch with, you know, and when we realized, you know, we now talk like once a month on a Zoom call at lunch break and it's, it's fabulous. You know, wow. I know we're over 40 years and, you know, we sort of realized like, well, just because we don't live close to each other and we can't do anything about that now, we have this capacity and it's just been great, deepened that friendship. Yeah. So thank you, Deb. That actually triggered something in myself that I reconnected with the high school friend too. Has anyone else reconnected with people from your past that you that this has been an opportunity for you to reach out that you didn't have before? Yeah, thank you for that, Deb. And Megan, one thing Deb did present for us about museums and pictures and positive psychology last year. And we did say we would round back to you because I know you do walking tours in New York and the weather's getting nice. So we're gonna find Deb. Caroline, I do think we should do some programming post-pandemic. One of my hopes is that we could go down to New York City, do a tour with Deb, go see the art museums. Wow, meet each other. Who would be up for that? Meeting each other in person. Yay. Yeah, that would Absolutely. be great. Absolutely. Let's do it. Uh, but I, I have just one thing to say. Yes, please. I think, I think that... Um, I think the best thing to have learned during this time was to reframe to turn um, to turn l lemons into lemonade. It's all mm -hmm. how you look at it. Like we may, again, I, I think I said this to, in my group, but we, we may never have a, a year of this time of glory to focus on whatever we like yeah. again. And yeah. so it's all how you think about it as opposed to it being isolating and negative. It's a great time to 
really make a difference, you know, mm -hmm. for yourself and the world. Mm, thank you, Donna, for sharing and rephrasing that and reframing it and restoring it. Excellent. And Brenda, I notice you have your hand raised. Feel free to unmute and share. Well, I found that I really found that I enjoyed the Zooms. It opened up a whole new avenue to learning that wasn't really available before. And I'm actually kind of um, dreading is too strong a word, but but apprehensive about post pandemic when people go back to just being in person being kind of introverted. That's, I, I really enjoy the zooms and I'm learning so much. So thank you for this. Mm, thank you, Brenda. That's a good point. Good point. And Brenda, I just want to say this is Phoebe. Dr. Sherry Kelly will be back with us in May, and she's going to speak to this very topic about kind of transitioning the apprehension and all of these things that people are feeling and how we might navigate that. So there's a lot of comments in. Feel free to type into the chat if you have other things that haven't been explored. Uh, Anne is suggesting, again, a, a post-pandemic gathering, which would be fun. And Marsha agreed yes to that. Joy had new capacity, new perspectives. Um, yeah, so thank you, Anita, for that share. I'm going to um, turn it over to um, Caroline so we can end on a fun movement note as well. Awesome. So you guys, we're going to be talking. I, Dan Tomasulo, who will be here next week, and uh, we'll put that information in the chat. He wrote uh, Learned Hopefulness, correct, Phoebe? Is that the title of his book? And just amazing. We had him here last year to speak to us about hope and how to activate the hope circuitry. And I did my SIP project on hope. And it is, uh, it's not wishing. It really means you get into action. But one of the things he said is if he had to name one positive psychology practice that he felt is the most useful, it would be savoring. Mm. And savoring, there are four ways to savor, right? That he, that uh, one is luxuriating. So let's take a moment and do a movement that's luxuriating, that just is like. So if you would do that with me, and then I want you to move it, right? I want you to move that luxuriating because savoring is about taking time and taking it in. So breathe in, luxuriating. I also could think of like, what's another gesture I want to put, remove my spotlight and put you all on and show me your, oh, Anne, that's gorgeous. Show me your luxuriating movement. Oh, beautiful, Elaine, I love that. Yes, Laura, nice, living into that, gorgeous. So Anne is doing this, so you can try that on, just like you would try on an outfit. And Elaine is doing this. And Donna is doing this. And Laura's doing this. These are beautiful movements. And Megan, is, her arms are back. Yeah, just scroll through. Take a moment and scroll through. Patricia's, her arms are up here and coming in. And, and John, yes, Nancy's doing that. And Marilyn's hugging. And oh, Joan, that's a nice one. Yeah, just so your own gesture. <laughs> I love that one, Marilyn. Uh -huh. um, for savoring. And then I'll bring myself back. And let's do the next one, which is marveling. Like marvel. And when I think of taking on marvel i think of awe and for me that gesture is like this right and what is so take that on and just it's like if someone just arrived and, and threw a bunch of flowers into your arms you'd be like oh my or seeing the grand canyon for the first time yeah and then you take on your own marveling gesture let me just un remove my spotlight so i can see you do you because we will, we've learned from Sonia Lubomirsky the importance of personalizing something. Oh, Lisa Brandis showed us her flowers. That's beautiful. And I love the hands, Elaine and, and Rachel, but just even that, marveling. Yes, that's beautiful. Okay, and so then let's move on to the next one, which is, um, I'll spotlight me so you can see me. I hope you can see me. Um, celebration. <laughs> So what I'd like to do is like, woohoo, arms are up, exactly. And can you unmute and give me a woohoo? Let's do it. 
Go ahead. Anybody that wants to and just go. Yeah. 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 There's a bit of shaking. And Kelly McGonigal talks about that. When we lift our arms up and we look up, that wow. activates joy, right? So yeah, beautiful. That's like yeah. this. Go like this. It's oh, one nice. wonderful. <laughs> Yes. Nice. Nice. Yes. yes. I, I heard some people saying yes. Yes. That's beautiful. Okay. So just mute yourself because we have one more. And that is, let's put our hands together. Giving thanks. Gratitude. And what's another of gratitude? Exactly. So those are the ways that we can savor. We can luxuriate. So let's do that together. Luxuriate, marvel, celebrate, and give thanks. Shall we do it again? Luxuriate, marvel, celebrate, and give thanks. And that's the conclusion of our year as we sum it up and we thank you for just coming with us on this journey. Megan said early on, we're doing something called adaptive responding, which is we don't really know what we're doing in the moment we're creating it. And I'd say that what I've learned from the SIP program and working with these two amazing ladies is, and colleagues and professionals is that that's how life is lived, right? In the moment, adapting to what is, the reality, the tough, and the brilliant all in one. So I thank you for being with me and uh, Megan and Phoebe for teaching me so much. Mm. I'm, I feel blessed. Mm. Please unmute and say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Absolutely. Bye. Thank you. Bye. We'll see you next week. We'll see you on Tuesday. Don't forget to come. Happy weekend. Bye, everyone. Love you guys. Just Love right. you guys too. Thank you so much. Hey, Sonia. Bye. Great to see you. Bye. 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 Okay. I'm Wonderful to see you all. Bye, Sonia. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.